Hi everyone, I'm Jo from Country Cow Designs. Welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make the Keldron bag, which is one of my patterns. So this is a circle bag. It's got quite a few uses. Um, I think mostly I'm gonna use it around the home. I've got a friend who's gonna have one for knitting because it's great for that kind of thing. Uh, one of my sisters is gonna have it for her weaving. And I'm gonna use mine just to store Xbox controllers, remote controls, that sort of thing around the living room, just try and tidy the place up. But you can also use it as a crossbody bag. So I've added D-rings on the sides if you want to use it as a crossbody bag, or if you maybe just want to use it as um, a bag to go to a friend's. You, you know, you can fit a bottle of wine, some chocolate, a film, that sort of thing in there. Um, so there's lots of different uses, you know, just let me know in the comments what you're going to be using yours for, and um, maybe you can give others some ideas. So the first thing to decide is the stabiliser you want to use. So for this one, I've used foam and it's nice and sturdy, keeps its nice circle shape really well. Um, another option that you could use is Decaville Light. So this one is made with Decaville Light and you can see it kind of folds, folds nicely at the top. So if you're using it as a handbag or as a shoulder bag, that is kind of nice because it closes it up at the top, um, but it gives it a much more slouchy feel. Um, a third option could be fusible fleece. So this one I've made with medium weight fusible fleece. And again, it sort of folds more at the top, a little bit more slouchy. So it really depends what you're using it for um, and what kind of stabiliser you prefer. But the pattern piece has the option for either. Um, and in this video, I'm going to be making one with sew-in foam. So I'll show you how to do that. Now, if you've watched my channel before, you'll notice that we're in a different room. And that's because I wanted to do a video with my Singer 201. And I'm sure that I'm not the only one who has one of these that has been sitting around for at least a year not being used. So I finally got it up and running. Um, I think I paid £25 for it. It needed a lot of oil and I needed to fix the um, stitch length adjuster because the longest stitch length was very short and it turned out the lever was just bent. Um, I had to fix the timing on the bobbin. These are all just things that I just watched YouTube videos for. There's loads out there to help you get it running. And now it's just running brilliantly and it's so good for bags. So I just wanted to show one of my bags being made on this so that if you've got one, maybe it'll inspire you to give it a try and get it out and use it. Um, I know they're pretty to look at, but they're actually really nice to sew on as well. So I hope you find this video useful. If you want to buy the pattern and actually sew along, um, you can get it from my website. I'll leave the link in the description um, otherwise, you can just watch along if you want to and if you want to pick up maybe a few bag making tips and that sort of thing. So let me know in the comments if you've got any questions and I hope you enjoy the video. So we'll start by having a look at the pattern pieces. Now for my hardware, because I'm having the crossbody strap, I've got a wide mouth um, strap slider. That's because I'm using cork. And I've got two swivel clasps and two D-rings. So these are all one inch. Then I've got my two exterior, exterior zips for my exterior zip pockets. So I've got a seahorse and an anchor. Because these are going to be on opposite sides of the bag, I think it's going to look um, nice to have different zipper pulls. Then I've got my lining zipper zip for my zipper pocket. And then I've got my ready-made piping, which I've cut down into four pieces. Now in the pattern, it explains um, what size piping you need. This is slightly too small. And the pattern also explains how to fit piping that's slightly too small so um, if you need any more guidance on that you can just have a look at the pattern but you'll see how I use this. Now I've got my exterior panel pieces so I've got two made of cork and I've already cut them down as indicated in the pattern later on and then I've got two exterior panels with waves. I've got my exterior base and my two handles my two D-ring connectors, and then my crossbody strap. So those D-ring connectors and the crossbody strap are optional. Then I've got the lining top, which is made of an exterior fabric. So I've chosen to have that in waves. And then for my actual lining fabrics, I've got four pocket pieces. Now these are for the two exterior zip pockets. If you want to just have one exterior zip pocket, you can definitely do that. I've got two lining panels. So that's just the main lining panels. Uh, I've got the lining base, which I've already fused my stabiliser to. I've got a zip pocket facing for my interior zip pocket and two zip pocket pieces for the interior zip pocket. Lastly, I've got my sewing foam. 
So mine's slightly bigger because I'm using a sewing stabiliser. If you're using a fusible one, then you can go ahead and use the pattern piece for the smaller fusible interfacing, and then that will keep it out of the seam allowances. So we'll start with the handles. So on both of my handles, I've drawn a line down the centre of the interfacing side. So I've just used my um, heat erasable pens. So for everything that I'm using in the video, I'll put links in the description, um, including this wool mat. So what I'm just doing, first of all, is folding this long raw edge into that centre line. Then I'm going to bring in the other side to match that. Then you want to fold it again on that original centre line and you're just going to press that together. So what you'll now have is a handle four layers thick with raw edges on the short ends. So just clip it together so that it's ready to sew. And next we're going to take it over to the sewing machine and just top stitch with an eighth of an inch seam allowance down both long edges. Next up, we've got the crossbody strap. So if you're not doing a crossbody strap for yours, you can just skip to the next section. But what you'll notice is I've already drawn the line down the center, same as I did on the handles, all the way down the length. Now, if you're using a um, cotton or canvas fabric strap, then you just wanna fold this end in, well, both short ends, and then, and then you're gonna fold in the long ends. So I'll show you how to do that in a minute, but because I'm doing a cork strap and I don't have any strap ends on hand, I'm going to do a different technique to um, trim the bulk out of the ends. So I've done this technique once before a long time ago and I really didn't like it, um, but I'm giving it another go because someone on Instagram um, inspired me to give it another try and I'm also, yeah, I don't have any strap ends, so I'm just going to give it a go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim this so that I've got a triangle. So I'm going to bring it to one inch down and just trim it like that. Okay, so you can see it's one inch there from the tip down to here. And then what I'm going to do is repeat that on the other end which I've already done and I'm just going to fold these long edges in so because I'm using cork I'm going to use double-sided tape to make this a bit easier I'm going to apply double-sided tape all the way down the long edges and then I'm going to fold both edges in now my double-sided tape is on I'm just going to whip that off and fold it into the center line that I marked And I'm going to do that along the whole length and then I'm going to fold this side in to match it. Now if you're doing a fabric strap it's going to be pretty much the same but you can just follow the um, written pattern for a fabric strap. Okay so this is what you should have now and I should have mentioned if you're using double-sided tape make sure that it's double-sided tape that you can sew through without causing problems with your needle and your machine. Um, it took me a while to find some that my machine agrees with um, so I'll put the link in the description for this one. Now I've got a little bit more tape up here. And what I'm gonna do is just fold it down so it should technically meet. And then what we're gonna do, I think I'm gonna need some more tape 
but we're going to fold it like that. So it's going to give us a much thinner end. So you just need to make sure that you don't get these gaps here. And for that, I think I might use some glue. Okay, so I've put some glue on there instead because that seems like it's probably going to work better. And then I'm just going to use some clips to hold that in place while it dries. So make sure that you've done that on both ends. And then we're going to fold the whole strap on that original center line. So hopefully that will stay now. And I'm going to clip this along the whole length of the strap. But I'm just going to spend a couple of minutes trying to make sure that these little holes aren't there. So this is what put me off trying this method in the past because I had trouble with this last time. But I'm just going to spend a few minutes just trying to sort that out and get a neater finish. Okay, so this is how your crossbody strap should look when it's finished. And it's ready now for top stitching. So we're going to top stitch both um, long edges and the short ends with a quarter inch seam allowance. And then I think I'm going to run a couple of extra rows of stitching at three eighths of an inch seam allowance down the center. So you can see that I spent quite a bit of time trying to perfect these corners and I'm still not, not particularly happy with them. This method is really nice for meaning that you don't have thick ends, but it definitely leaves something to be desired on the end as well. So um, it depends what you think and whether you want to give it a try, but um, you know me, I like to try new things. So I'll take this over to the sewing machine now and top stitch it. So this is my top stitched crossbody strap. So you can see that I, I just couldn't quite get the perfect finish on this corner. So that's why I don't really like this method. Um, perhaps you've got a slightly better way of doing it that you can recommend. Um, but I'm going to leave it as it is for now. It's not too bad. Now I need to attach my hardware. So I've got this wide mouth slider, which is great for if you're using vinyl or cork. And I'm just going to fold this end of the strap through the slider. So it's going over this min, uh, middle bar. You want to fold it back by about one and a half to two inches. That should be fine. Now what you can do is just sew this with a box and an X on your sewing machine. Instead, I'm going to use rivets for mine. So I've got this little rivet template that I use. And this will just make sure that my rivets are nice and central. So I'll just put a couple of clips on to hold it in place. And then I'm just going to decide where to place my rivets. So with this tool, it just means I can line it up. And it helps me make sure that they're nice and centered. And then I've got this um, punching tool for the holes. So I got this from my local hardware shop, but you can get them on Amazon as well. So when I'm using this, I just make sure I've got it on the smallest setting available. It is a bit of a tight fit. Once you've got your holes punched, you need to grab one of the cap ends and one of the post ends. Just push that post through and place the cap on the other end. Now 
Now the easiest way to set rivets is with a rivet press like this. So it's got dies that go in the top and the bottom. These are for a nine millimeter rivet, which is what I'm using. And you just make sure it's centered on the bottom one. Make sure as you bring the top down that it's nice and centered and give it a good press. And it should set them nice and neat like that. I have had trouble with rivets in the past, but ever since I've been using these emmeline ones, I just don't seem to have any problems with it. So now that you've done that, you need to get a swivel clasp and put the other end through there. Now what we want to do is bring it back through here. So you want to make sure that as you do this, that your swivel hook is on the outside. So you can see that mine's the wrong way. So I'm just going to take that off and put it on this way around instead. So then I can, can go through this outside bar, back through the other side. And if you pull it tight, what you'll end up with is that. So on the other end, we need to attach the other swivel clasp. So just pop that on the end. And we're going to do the same thing again, bolt it back by an inch and a half or two inches. And then I'm just going to rivet that into place. So again, you can just sew this into place with a box. Um, I would normally do a box and an X if I was going to do it that way. But whichever way you do it, what you'll end up with is this strap that has swivel clasps on either end and a slider in between. So just set that aside and we'll move on to making our D-ring connectors. So for your D-ring connectors, you want to draw down the centre on the interfacing side and we're just going to fold the long edges in to meet that centre line. So if you're using cork or vinyl and you can't press it with an iron, just use some double-sided tape to hold these edges in place. And you're going to leave the short ends raw. What we're going to do is just top stitch with a quarter inch seam allowance down each long edge. Once those are both top stitched, you want to put a little bit of double sided tape on the ends of the wrong side. So this is the side with the join. And then I'm just going to peel that off and hopefully you can see that I've marked it along the center. So once I've put a D ring on here, I'm just going to fold this back so that it sits on that mark and the double sided tape should hold that there. So you just want both ends to meet nice and neatly. And then I'm going to put another little bit of double sided tape on here just to hold it together until we fit it. So just go ahead and do the exact same thing with the second connector and D-ring. So for this step, you're going to need your piping. So that should be cut down into four pieces now. You're going to need two exterior zips. You're going to have two exterior panels and another two exterior panels that you're going to cut down as the first step. So as you can see, they're the same size to begin with and we've cut those down as instructed in the pattern. And you're also going to need your four exterior pocket lining pieces. So once you've got your zip pockets cut down, you're just going to take one of the smaller pieces and grab a zip and figure out which way it's going to be going when it's closing. So. Mine's closing in this direction. 
So I want it to be on the left when closed. So I'm just going to put that right sides together and clip it together. If you're using a directional print here, make sure the zip is clipped to the bottom. So the directional print, this would be the top and this will be the bottom. Now that's clipped into place, I'm going to baste it with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Now that's basted, grab one of your exterior zip pocket pieces. So this is a lining piece. This is right side up and that's going to be the top of the pocket if you've got a directional print. And what you want to do is just flip that over and clip it together, right sides together. So that's clipped right sides together with the exterior and the zip is sandwiched between. Now we're going to sew this with a quarter inch seam allowance. So if you've seen my other videos, you'll know that when I'm using my Benina, I move my needle over so that I can get a nice close stitch to the zip. I don't like using a um, zipper foot because I just find it difficult to get a perfectly straight line. But with my 201, you'll notice that the normal foot is quite small and actually it gives me quite a nice finish. So I just use that. Um, another thing to point out is that a lot of people sew the ends of their zips closed so they don't lose the zipper pull. Um, I never seem to lose mine, so I don't really worry about that. But it's just something to bear in mind if you want to do it. So what we're going to do is we're going to push this exterior piece up away from the zip. And now I'm just going to top stitch through here with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. And when I'm top stitching, I use the longest stitch length that I've got on my machine, which is about four millimetres. Next you need to grab the bigger piece of the exterior that you cut up and what you're going to do is just take this free edge of the zip and place it right sides together and just clip that together. And now we're going to base that together with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Now that's basted, grab one of your pocket pieces. This needs to be the right side and you want this to be the top if you're using a directional print. So you're just going to place that on top. So these two pocket pieces are now right sides together and they both have the top pointing that way. Now you're just going to clip that together. Now we're going to sew through it with a quarter inch seam allowance just like we did on the other side of the zip. Now what you need to do is push the exterior bottom piece, which is the bigger piece, away from the zip. And you want to do the same thing with this bottom pocket piece. So if you're using all cotton, you can just press this with an iron, but I'm going to do it by hand because I just don't want to use heat on the cork unless I have to. And I'm just going to use a couple of clips to hold that in place. So you just want to get a nice neat finish because now we're going to top stitch through this with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. When you're doing this, just maybe clip this other pocket piece up because you don't want to sew through it accidentally. All you want to be sewing through is the bottom piece. So you can unclip everything now and flip that over so you're looking at the lining side. Now you want to bring this top pocket piece down and you'll see that it's slightly longer. So we're just going to mark that on the longer piece. And 
And now you just want to trim this longer piece so that it's going to match. So just when you're trimming this, make sure everything else is out of the way. And then you want to match these two together and just clip them along the bottom. And now we're just going to sew through here with a quarter inch seam allowance. But again, make sure it's away from the exterior. You just want to sew the bottom of the pocket closed. You don't want to sew through the exterior. Okay, so that's your pocket done. If you want to, you could base down the sides just to hold the pocket in place, but we will be sewing that down later anyway. And you'll also need to do the exact same thing to create your second zipper pocket panel, assuming that you're going with the pattern and having two zippers. So for the next step, we're going to be fitting the piping. Now in the pattern, I've said about having um, piping that is half an inch wide in total. But sometimes you just don't have the right size piping on hand. So I'm going to show you with this piping, for instance, um, that isn't really the right size for a 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. But I'll just show you how I fit it instead. So first of all, I've measured, hopefully you can see the stitches on the piping. I've measured to just past that and you can see that mine is a quarter of an inch wide. Because I want a 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance, that means that I need to offset my piping by an eighth of an inch. So I just need to clip it in place like that. Rather than having it flush with the edge, I just need it an eighth of an inch in. That means when I'm sewing down this line just here, because we're going to be sewing pretty much down the existing stitching, then that will be three eighths of an inch and that will allow me to have my three eighths of an inch seam allowance. So I've marked my centre, marked my centre on my piping as well, and I've also marked one inch in on each end. So the first thing I'll do is just match up my center marks. And then I'll just clip it along until I get to the one inches. So what we want now is for this piping to veer off at 90 degrees where the one inch marks are. So if you've done, um, an exterior like a recessed zipper panel on one of my bags then you'll know how I normally do this it's just the same technique you're just gonna sort of pinch it so that you get a fold now you just want to make sure that it's lined up with that one inch mark and then just clip that in place so hopefully you can see that it's folded there and it's just going off at a nice neat angle and you're going to do the exact same thing on this end. And hopefully you can see that I've got my little one eighth of an inch gap there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it over to the sewing machine and I'm going to baste that into place. Um, but at the same time, I'll do the exact same thing with another piece of piping down the other edge. Now, some people prefer to base this in place by sewing along that existing stitching line. And then what they have later on is a stitching line to follow to sew over again. Personally, I prefer to just base it in place, um, but I will do one of each way so then I can show you the difference. So this is what you should have once your piping is attached. Now, this is how I like to attach my piping. Um, then when I'm sewing it on later, you'll see that I just use the feel of the piping as the guide for the stitching. Another method is to do this and to stitch over the existing stitching. 
and then later on when you're sewing it right sides together you follow this stitching that you can see quite visibly there to ensure that you get a nice neat finish so whichever method you prefer um, just use that or if you've not tried piping before you can try both methods and see which one works for you now you need to do the same thing to the other exterior panel and then if you're having a crossbody strap we need to fit the d-rings so i've already marked mine up um, so in the pattern it gives you the measurement there and i'm just going to take the double-sided tape off the back of my connector And then you want to place it so this fold is on the mark you've made. Make sure that's nice and central. And now I'm going to stitch all the way across here and add a couple of rivets. You don't have to add rivets. If you just want to um, sew, then you could just sew an X through the box instead. Um, I'm going to get as close as I can to this by using my zipper foot. Another option is to use your hump jumper to keep the foot level as you're coming across the D-ring here. Now, that should be your exterior panels done. So uh, you'll notice that I ended up using my standard presser foot with my hump jumper, because when I tried using a zipper foot, I just couldn't get it up near the ring. And I just love to sew as close as I can to that ring to hold it in place. I've also added a couple of rivets and done the same thing with my second exterior panel. So that should be all of our panels done now, and we can move on to the next step. For this step, you're going to need your two pocket panels and your two exterior panels, and you're also going to need your exterior base. Now, if you haven't already, um, I recommend just using a lighter or some fray check on your zips, because as you can see, they fray quite badly. So I just use it really quickly on them. And that just melts the ends close so that they don't fray any further. Obviously, though, you need to be careful not to um, singe your work or set it on fire. So we're going to start with one of the panels that has piping on it. And we're just going to place this pocket panel right sides together with it. Make sure that it's nicely lined up along the edges and just clip those together. Now, if your panels are different sizes, that will be because you've um, used a different seam allowance on your zips or maybe you've used a different size zip. So if they're different, just trim them to match. If you're trimming the pocket panel, that's fine. You just go ahead and trim it to match. If you're having to trim your main panels, then just make sure that you take note in the pattern where it says that you'll need to trim the lining as well to match. But hopefully, if you've used the seam allowances and a number five zip, it will all just fit together like this. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to sew along here with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. So if you um, use the method where you stitched along the stitching, then you can sew from this side and you can sew directly over your stitching. I prefer to do it um, this way, so I'm just going to push my zipper foot right up against the piping and sew down here. Now, whichever method I use, I generally find that I'll miss a little bit on the first go. So I'll sew down here, I'll check for, for any stitching that's on show, and normally there's a, there's a tiny bit, so I'll go back and do a second row of stitching just to be sure I've caught it.
Okay, so hopefully you can see just here, there's a tiny bit where I can see the stitching on the piping. So I just haven't got quite close enough. So I'm just gonna do a second row stitching just on that section, not, not the whole length. And there's a little bit up here that I've missed. Now I tend to find whichever method I use that I have this problem. So I, I seem to just think it's not much of a problem. I would recommend sewing from this side because you can feel the piping easier and you can butt the, um, butt the presser foot right up against it. Whereas when you're sewing from this side, the pocket makes that a little bit harder. So this is what you should have once that's done. What we need to do now is top stitch along this edge. So we're going to make sure that all the seams are behind it when we're top stitching. I'm just going to top stitch down here. Now, if like me, you have to change your presser foot, um, because I prefer to use a standard presser foot for the top stitching, but I need to use a zipper foot for the piping, then you might prefer to just go ahead and connect a few more of your panels so that you don't need to change your foot so often. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew that one on. I'm then going to sew the fourth one on so that I've got a row of four. And then I'm going to top stitch all of those at once before I turn it into a circle. Um, so what's going to happen eventually is it's going to become a tube. So I'll just do that first and then I'll go on to top stitch down here. Just a quick point before I sew these all together, just make sure that your zipper pockets and your D-rings are all pointing the same way. So you're all clipped together at the top because um, you could accidentally sew one of them on upside down. So what I'm just gonna do now is sew both edges with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance, and then I'll go straight on to top stitch all three edges. Now we just need to sew up the last section. So just fold this over and clip these two edges together. And we're just gonna sew through this last edge with 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. So when you're doing all of these edges, just make sure that your pockets are lying nice and flat like this because you're actually sewing the pockets closed as you go. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sew that with 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance and then from the inside, I'm going to top stitch that last seam. So I find this easiest um, to do going through my machine with it like this. So it's, so it's um, insides out. You can try it different ways on your machine, but for me, I find that that is the only way to get a really neat top stitch. So this last bit, it's not going to be too easy doing the top stitch, but that's probably one of the hardest parts of making this bag. And um, you can just make sure that that's on the back seam of the bag. So if it's not absolutely perfect, then at least it won't be as noticeable. So this is what you're going to have for your exterior now and we now need to attach the base. So first of all you need to mark the um, four centre marks on your base. Now when I've worked out the size of this base um, I've made it so that it's based on the circumference of where we're actually sewing. So if we base this on the exterior circumference of this circle then what would happen is when you're trying to sew it where the circumference is a lot smaller here you're going to have real trouble and you're going to have like bulk building up. So it's going to feel like it's too tight and like it doesn't fit, but that is what's necessary to ensure that when you're sewing it, it actually fits perfectly. So the first thing that you're going to need to do is to cut little snips into the bottom. So make sure you've got the bottom to start with. 
and we're just doing like quarter inch snips and they can be about an inch apart or something like that so you just want a sharp small pair of scissors and I'm just going to do this around the whole base okay so the snips are necessary because otherwise it's just not going to fit now what you want to do is find one of your marks and match it to a seam so I'm just going to pick that seam and you just want to clip that into place then you need to find the next centre mark and match it to the next seam and clip that into place and you now need to do that with the following two seams so just match them again like that Okay, so you should have your four marks matched. Now, if you haven't snipped in, it's not gonna fit because what we have to do is we kind of have to stretch this to fit the exterior of the circle. So you just wanna stretch it a little bit and you'll see where the splits are that you've cut. They'll sort of sp split open and that's how it's gonna fit. So it's a really tight fit. Okay, and you need to do that around the whole circle. So now that's fitted, I'm gonna recommend something that most of you are probably not gonna to wanna to try, but if you have any trouble sewing curves and circles like I do, um, I've tried loads of different methods. I've tried staples, but that's frustrating because I have to remove them afterwards and it's just hard to staple them without it moving. And then I've got to dodge them when I'm sewing. I've tried glue, but that feels really messy. Um, so. Quite often what I end up doing is as I'm sewing, it's just constantly moving and then I have to redo it and it's quite a stressful experience. So to make my circles really easy, I've started hand sewing them. So before you <sighs> balk at this suggestion, all I'm talking about is whilst it's clipped together, I just sew some really big stitches. So I just get a long piece of thread, I've tied it together at the ends and all I do is it's just like a basting stitch. So they can be like an inch long. I'd say in total this probably takes me about three minutes to do, three or four minutes. And then I find when I'm sewing the base on that I don't get any movement. I actually leave my clips on still because I just want to be absolutely sure but I'm pretty sure that even if I took them out it would be fine. So all I'm doing is these really big basting stitches and trying not to get my thread knotted but hopefully you can see they're only one sided stitches. I'm just going to do that around the whole edge before I sew it. And then when I sew it on, I'm just going to use three eighths of an inch seam allowance. Okay, so there it is with it hand basted. You can see my stitches, they're not even, they're not neat, they don't need to be. All they're doing is just holding it in place and then you'll see as we sew it on how much easier it is because it's not going to move um, out of place at all. So I'm going to sew this all the way around with three eighths of an inch seam allowance. So you'll notice that I sewed a second line of stitching behind the first. I like to do that on my exteriors just to make sure that if the seams are under a lot of press, uh, under a lot of stress, that the stitches don't show. Now you shouldn't have any bunching at all. You should because the way it's constructed, 
just have a nice seam like this. So the last thing that you can do just to get a really nice, neat finish is to use some pinking shears. So don't get too close to your stitching, but this will just make it sit nice and neat on the inside later on. Okay, so now you can turn your exterior right sides out. And what you'll need to do is just spend some time really pushing these seams out and sort of rolling them between your fingers. And that will help get that really nice circular finish. So on the front and back, so where the zipper panels are, you need to mark the center just here. And then you're also gonna mark two inches to the right and left of that. And then all you're gonna do is just clip your one of your handles and you want to have the mark on the inside. So it's gonna be like that. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna baste across this handle. So just make sure that it's not gonna be twisted when it's folded up and then baste that into place. And we're gonna do the exact same thing on the other side. So I should have mentioned that when you're attaching your handles, you want to make sure that this um, edge with the seam is on the outside and that the neat edge is on the inside. And that means when you pull it up later, you're going to have the neat edge on the outside. So just make sure that it's fitted like that on both sides. So we're going to start with the zipper pocket. So what you're going to need is one of your lining panels your zipper pocket facing, your zip, and your two zip pocket pieces. So we'll start first of all, just with the facing. Now I've already marked my box on as um, set out in the pattern. This is just an inch in from each edge. So just measure and mark. I'll just show you with my little ruler. You just measure and mark from each edge and you'll end up with the box. And then you just need to do the center line and arrows. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna attach this to our main panel. So in the pattern, you've got yourself a measurement for how far down you want. The easiest way I find to do this is to fold your panel in half and just mark the center like that. And then I fold this one in the opposite direction. And now you can line up those crease marks really easily. So I'm just gonna measure that down and pin it into place. Now that's pinned, I'm gonna take it over to my sewing machine and I'm just gonna sew the outside box all the way around. So I'm gonna start um, perhaps on one of these long edges because I don't like to start on the corners. I think I get a neater finish when I start halfway along a box. Once you've got that sewn into place, just remove your pins before you go any further. And then we need to cut along this centre line and these arrows. And what you need to do is get as close as you possibly can to this corner stitching without clipping the stitching. So you might prefer to do it with a craft knife. So next, what we're going to do is we're going to press it around the edges just to get a really neat finish. So I like to press each side first before I pull this facing through. So you just want to sort of push this through to the other side. And if you just roll these seams out, you should be able to get a nice crisp finish. So 
So just check that it's nice and neat and don't underestimate how much good the iron can do at getting rid of these little creases. So they'll be really bad if you um, haven't cut close enough to your stitching in the corners, but the iron can do quite a lot to get rid of them. Next, we'll create the zipper pocket. So have one of your zipper pocket pieces right side up and we're just gonna place the zip right side up on top and my zip is closing to the left. So just clip that into place. Now I'm going to sew that in place with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Now that's sewn, grab your second pocket piece and place that right side up. And then what you're going to do is take the open edge of the zipper and place that right side up. So your pocket pieces are now right sides together and just clip those together. And sew that again with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Now what you'll have is the interfacing side of the fabric has the zip the right side up and the right side of the fabric has the wrong side of the zip. So we're just going to press this around the zip because it'll make it a lot easier to fit. Be careful if you've got metal zip or metal pull. So lay this open so you've got the zip right side up and what we're going to do is we're going to place the zip inside this box that we cut out. So I've already put some glue on the top and bottom here. You could use double sided tape or something if you prefer, uh, but I find glue the easiest. You could even pin it in place if you prefer. So what we're going to do, make sure that your zip is going left when it closes and place that centrally on top. Once you're happy with that placement, just let that dry for a moment. And now I'm going to top stitch all the way around this box with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Right, so when you're sewing this, make sure that this top pocket piece is up and the bottom is down. And you'll notice I didn't backstitch, I just left long threads. So what I'm gonna do is pull them through to the back. I just find that this gives me a slightly neater finish. So as you grab one, you'll see a little thread come up and I'm just gonna pull that through with a needle And then I'm just going to knot these off on the back. So I always go for a triple knot and then I just cut it nice and short. And that means that you can't see the starting and stopping. So for the next step, you just need to pull this top pocket piece down. And you'll notice my pocket pieces are too long just because I realize now that I cut them out wrong. Um, so yours should be shorter than this. And what you're gonna do, because one's longer than the other, you're gonna fold the short one up just by a quarter of an inch and then fold the longer one to match. So I'll just trim mine down before I do that. Okay, so your pocket pieces should be about this length. And what you wanna do is fold the shorter one up by about a quarter of an inch. Doesn't really need to be accurate. And just give that a good press. Now you want to fold the longer pocket piece up to match it. So you're folding both of them towards the wrong side and it's going to make it easier to 
sew your pocket closed later and get a nice neat finish. Now just clip it down both edges in preparation for sewing. And now I'm going to take this over to the machine and sew both edges with a quarter inch seam allowance. So just make sure that you pull this away when you're sewing it so you don't sew through the main panel by accident. For this next section you're going to need your two lining top pieces which will be made of an exterior fabric. You're going to have your zipper panel, your other lining panel and your two stabiliser pieces for the lining. So first of all we'll start with the plain lining panel. So you need to place this right side up, grab a lining top piece and place that right sides together and just clip those together. Do the same thing with your other lining panel and for both of these we're going to sew through the top with 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Now you'll notice that your lining top pieces are smaller on one side, they're not rectangles, so make sure that you've got them lined up with the shorter edge so they should match up perfectly like that. So now that's sewn on, you just want to press the seam open at the back. So you need to do this with your fingers if you have cork or vinyl or something, but with cotton I can just press it with the iron. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to top stitch each side of the seam with an eighth of an inch seam allowance and I'll do the exact same thing with my second lining panel. Next, you're going to need to attach your stabiliser. So if you have fusible stabiliser, then it will be slightly smaller than the pattern piece and it will be inset by half an inch on each edge. But if like me, you're using foam or another kind of sewing stabiliser, then what you need to do is just clip it in place and baste it. So the top pieces um, stick out a little bit, don't worry about that. You can still sew the rest on with an eighth of an inch seam allowance without it being a problem. With the panel that has a pocket, you should have a piece cut out, ready to pull the pocket through. So just make sure that you pull that pocket through nicely and then clip it together. Once those are both clipped together, we need to baste around the edges with an eighth of an inch seam allowance or you can use a zigzag stitch if you prefer, which sort of compresses it in the seams. So my personal favorite with foam is to baste it and then trim it out of the seam allowance, uh, but it really depends on what your preferred method is. Once your stabiliser is sorted, place these two lining panels right sides together. Make sure that you match up where the lining tops are. So match that all up and we're just going to clip down both side edges. So now I'm going to sew the sides with 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. But because I'm using foam, as I get to about here, I'm going to increase to half an inch seam allowance. 
So if you're using a thinner stabiliser like Decaville um, or something like that, something that's just nice and thin, don't increase the seam allowance, just three eighths of an inch the whole way down. But because foam is so much bigger, it needs a little bit more space. So I'm going to increase it to half an inch just at the bottom. So an extra little option, um, when I'm using foam, I like to cut it out of the seam allowances. So what it, I do is I just rip my basting stitches out. And then I just trim that up to my stitches and that just really reduces the bulk in the seams and I find that it makes my lining lay nice and flat. So this is totally optional and if you've zigzagged the foam into place then you definitely won't want to do this um, because the zigzag itself will just compress it anyway. Um, but if you want that extra neat lining it's just an extra option for you. Now what you need to do is grab your lining base and mark the four centres again. And you want to also mark the centres on these two panels. So you can just do that by joining the seams and marking the centres. And just like we did with the exterior, snip quarter of an inch into the bottom, just all along the bottom edges. So now that I've done all of that, I'm going to start matching my marks, my centre marks, and I'm going to clip it into place on those four marks. You should already have your stabiliser fitted on the base. Um, if you prefer to, you can always fit that later. I know one of my testers, she um, created the whole bag and then after turning it out, she just slipped the base stabiliser in through the pocket. Like you did before, you're going to just stretch this out and clip it into place around the whole of the base. Once you've got that clipped all around, you just need to sew that on with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. And if you want to, you can hand baste it before doing that. So that's my lining base sewn on and then I've used some pinking shears again around the edge that will just make it sit nice and neat inside the bag. And the next thing that we need to do is join our exterior and lining pieces together. So if you're using um, like some thick vinyl or, or some delicate cork or something that you don't want to turn more than necessary, then what you can do is you can put the exterior inside the lining and then join the tops and sew them together. Um, but my preferred method, generally, because the lining is smaller, is to turn the lining inside out and then I turn the exterior right sides out. And then put the lining into the exterior. So this is always a little bit easier because the lining is smaller and so it fits better. Um, but yeah, if you don't want to turn the bag more than you have to, then the other option is perfectly fine. You just need to make sure that your exterior and lining are right sides together. I should have mentioned that we need to mark the centres on these exterior panels. So these are the ones without the zips. So you can just fold those. and just mark that. Now you need to line up these lining seams 
to the centre marks and clip them in place. When you're doing this, make sure that you open up the lining seam like that, which will make it easier when you're top stitching later because it will remove the bulk. So once those two bits are clipped, you just need to clip around the rest of the top. Make sure that your handles are inside between the lining and the exterior and your seams on these exterior panels will just be lying flat. So now we're gonna sew around the top with 3 8 third inch seam allowance and then I'm going to sew a second line of stitching just inside the seam allowance, just to reinforce it and make sure that the stitches don't show. So you can probably tell that I'm still just getting used to using the Singer um, when it's a flatbed machine. It's slightly different to sew something like this and top stitching is also going to be quite different. So the next thing you need to do is open your zipper pocket if you haven't done that already. So I quite often forget to do mine. So I just grab the zipper pull. through the lining fabric. There we go. Okay, so we're gonna pull the whole bag out through here. I generally just start with the exterior and it should come out pretty easily. Obviously, if you're using a thick vinyl or something, it'll be a bit tougher. And now you want to get your lining fitted into the exterior. So this is the moment when some people prefer to fit their base stabilizer. So you can like slip it in through the pocket and put it into there now. So if you haven't fitted your stabilizer, do that now. Um, and then I also just spend a minute just trying to get this pocket nice and neat. So we'll sew the pocket shut in a minute, but for now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna roll these seams out at the top. Sometimes I find I have to actually sort of reach in and push the seam out from the inside. So I'm going to do that all the way around and then I'm just going to clip it into place ready for top stitching. So that's my top clipped, making sure that your handles are pointing upwards and what we're going to do is top stitch with an eighth of an inch seam allowance all the way around the top. When you're using a flatbed machine like the 201, um, a lot of people turn the bag inside out um, but I'm actually just going to sew it like this. Um, so it's just personal preference really if you've of course if you've got um, a cylinder arm machine it's even better because you can just sew it around the cylinder arm So that's the bag top stitched. Now you need to pull your zipper pocket out from the inside and we just need to sew this closed. So you just want to clip this all the way along the top. And now we're going to sew this pocket closed with an eighth of an inch seam allowance.
So that's the Calgon all finished. So you just need to push your pocket back in and give it a good press and you should have a really nice, neat fitted lining. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, this bag has got loads of uses. Um, there's some tester photos at the end of the pattern, which just show what some of the testers were using them for. Um, I know a lot of people are using them for things like weaving and knitting supplies. So they're great for that kind of thing. Um, also just if you wanna go to a friend's house and you want to give them a gift with a bottle of wine and some chocolate and that sort of thing great for that so let me know in the comments what you're going to be using yours for if you have any questions feel free to ask and i hope you enjoyed this tutorial